Welcome. To start our investigation of place value and rounding in decimals, let's bring in a decimal number. The decimal is represented by a dot. And you can think of the dot or decimal as a separator between whole numbers on the left and parts of whole numbers on the right. Another way to think about it, let's say we had a dollar fifty. The number on the left, the one, represents an, a whole dollar, while the number on the right represents part of a whole dollar. In this case, it would only be half of a whole dollar, or fifty cents. Okay, I'll just remove that here so we can look at place value. And we will start by looking at the whole uh, numbers first, which is the stuff on the left. And we can separate each digit into its own column. And you might remember that the first column is the ones column. The second column is the tens column. The third is the hundreds column. The fourth is the thousands column. The fifth is the ten thousands column. And we could keep going. And notice that the ending of these columns is always with an S. And the columns are named this way because what it means is that uh, for example, if we select the ones column, what this means is whatever digits in here, we multiply that by one. In the tens column, we multiply that digit by ten. In the hundreds column, we multiply it by a hundred, etc. So the part of the number on the left consists of nine ten thousands, seven one thousands, five hundreds, three tens, and one one. Now, when we think about place value on the other side, the, on the right-hand side, the parts of whole numbers, we simply do uh, the opposite. So we can think of this decimal separator as kind of like a mirror. So whatever we did on this side, we do the same on the other side, but in the opposite direction and opposite operation. Okay, so we could start. Let's see. Well, maybe the, instead of multiplying by 1 here, the next one over might be to divide by 1. So let's do that. Maybe say this is the place where we divide by 1. Hmm, but hang on a second. What is the difference between multiplying by 1 and dividing by 1? For example, if we had 8 times 1, we'd get 8. If we had 8 divided by 1, we'd still end up with 8. These are actually the same thing. Multiplying by 1 and dividing by 1 are the same. So what we do is we place it in the same column. Multiplying by 1 and dividing by 1 are the same thing, so they're in the same column. So what's the next one over? Okay, I'll just move that there. So the next one over is uh, here. We multiplied by 10, so going this way we would then divide by 10. And we place that decimal digit in its own column, and we call this then the tenths column. Okay, we can keep going. We'll put, place them again in their own columns. So as we keep moving this direction to the, to the right, so we divide by 10, the next one over would be to divide by 100. And the next one would be to divide by 1,000. And the next one then would be to divide by 10,000. So this is the hundredths column. The next one would be the thousandths column. And the next one would be the ten thousandths column, and so on. Notice for the decimal digits, the uh, place values had the THS ending, thousandths, ten thousandths, etc. Now another way to say divided by ten is to say multiply by one over ten. Dividing by hundreds is the same thing as multiplying by one over a hundred. 
dividing by a thousand, by one over a thousand, etc. So just to sum up, the parts to the left are the whole number parts. Those are the parts bigger than one. And the parts on the right are the parts less than one. One other thing to point out is that numbers to the left and to the right have matching pairs. So for example, the tens and the tenths match up, the hundreds and the hundredths, the thousands and the thousandths, etc. Okay, so how do we say and write this number? We start on the left-hand side, and we can see that this is 97,000. 531, and we use the word and when we're talking about a decimal, 2,468 ten thousandths. Now that's quite a mouthful, so there's another way to say it. We could say it like so. 97,531, same as before, and then instead of and, we use the word point, and just say the digits, two, four, six, eight, like so. Let's take a look at rounding now. To do that, I'm going to move over to the side here, and let's paste in our number again. And I'll write back in our place values for each of the digits. Okay, so let's say we wanted to round to the nearest thousand. So we looked for where is the thousand column, and which digit represents the thousands. So we find it right here. The seven is in the thousands column. So I'm going to put a little green box around it. And so what we do is we look to the number immediately to the right, and so it's the number five. If it's five or bigger, we bump this number up by one. So it would become an eight. Everything to the right of that number goes to zero. Zero, 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 zero. Anything to the left of the number stays the same. Now zeros after the decimal place do not change the value of a number. Therefore, we could just remove these zeros. And so the number rounded to the nearest thousand would be 98,000. Okay, what if we wanted to round to the nearest thousandth with the TH ending at the end? Well, let's locate that column. The thousandths column is right here, so it's the digit 6. Again, I'll put a green box around it. And we apply the same logic as before. We look to the number immediately to the right. If it's bigger than 5, or 5 or bigger, we bump it up. And in our case, 8 is bigger than 5, so we bump up the 6 to make it a 7. Anything to the right goes to 0. Anything to the left stays the same. So this would be like so. Again, zeros at the end of a decimal here can be removed. So this number would be 97,531.247. That's rounded to the nearest thousandth. Okay, let's round to the nearest tenth with the TH ending. So we find the tenths column. It's right here. So we'll put a green box around the tenths digit, which is the 2. We look to the digit immediately to the right is a 4. It is less than 5, so we leave this digit as, as is. We leave it um, as a 2. So this would become a 2. Anything to the right goes to 0. Anything to the left stays the same. Again, zeros after a decimal point at the end can be removed. And so rounded to the nearest tenth is 97,531.2. Okay, let's say we wanted to round it to the nearest cent. Perhaps this is a dollar amount. 
So rounding to the nearest cent means rounding it to the second decimal place, or the hundredths column. So we locate that digit. It would be the 4. I'm going to put a green box around it again. We apply the rules. We look to the digit immediately to the right. If it's 5 or greater, we bump it up. If not, we leave it alone. So 6 is bigger than 5, so we bump this up. And we would get 5. Anything to the right goes to 0. Anything to the left stays the same. And we remove any zeros at the end after a decimal. So this amount, rounded to the nearest cent, would be $97,531.25. And there you go. Thanks for watching.